Hello everyone, my name is Elliot and today I'm going to show you how to set up a perfect collectible in Unity game project. So I have a really nice collectible here, a golden mushroom, and all we have to do is just export it on scale 1, put it on one column and just download the sprite sheet. Then we're just going to drag this sprite sheet that we got straight into the Unity itself here. Then we're going to create a folder, call it sprites. Drag this file in here, create a new folder, call it collectibles. Put this file inside here so we can have assets folder sorted out properly. Back in inspector, we are going to set this scale to 25 by 25. Make sure that you know what size your sprites are made in. It could be 16 by 16 or 32 by 32. We're gonna set filter mode to point or no filter and we're gonna set compression to none. And also don't forget to set this to multiple. Go to the sprite editor, click on the slice, by size, cell size, 25 by 25. See all the image get cut. We're gonna click slice and we're gonna apply create a new empty object and we're going to call it collectible. Drag one any frame from this sprite sheet, place it down in hierarchy here and we're going to move this shroom collectible. You go to the windows and just animation and open animation window. While selected the sprite in the hierarchy, click here create. Back in the assets folder we're going to create a new folder and we're going to call it animations. Inside the animations folder we're going to create another folder and we'll call it, call it collectibles. And inside this folder we're going to create this animation we're going to call it golden mushroom animation. Drag out animations window out, select all these frames, drag it inside here. If you don't see this samples icon all you have to do is just click on these three dots and just toggle on show the sample rate. Now if you're gonna click play we're gonna see the animation play. To slow it down we just need to type in a lower number. Keep it on 12. We can add extra animations on top of it. Click this record button, start with the first frame, make sure to have the sprite selected, move this slightly up so we could have first keyframes created and we're gonna start with the zero. Every third frame, just going to move it, then we're going to move it back to zero and just move it back up to zero on the very last frame, right where this lighter color and five intervals pretty much if you have four frame animation you can just copy across the same animation multiple times and as you can see already we have this collectible that is moving and spinning at the same time. Collectible is improved. So back in the collectible, we're going to add a rigid body and just set all the values to zero. Continuous, constrain the rotation on Z. Collider, set this on trigger. So before we start coding in, I'm just going to create player so I can demonstrate the next part. Tag it as a player, create a layer and call it a player. If that's what you prefer, you can rename it to player as well. Add capsule collider 2D, add a rigid body 2D as well. Now I'm not going to code the player itself, I'm just setting up the collisions itself, collision detection to continuous and interpolate to interpolate. Set all the values on zero. So now we're going to create a new folder called it scripts, C sharp, and we're going to call it collectible. Now at this point you can name it however you like. And in this class you don't really need much void on trigger enter 2D and say if, take this reference, type it in here, collision.tag equals player. Of course there are many other ways to detect if the player is colliding, it compare tag as well, it could be this line as well, there are different ways to just check. Basically if the player is colliding, trigger some kind of uh, events and of course at the end we're going to destroy this game object. And that's pretty much it, just save this script, throw this script right on top of the collectible and if I'm going to play it, the collectible is spinning, everything works fine, player move it to the collectible boom, the collectible disappeared. Collisions happened and everything is working fine. As you can see, everything works as it should be. Now that we got these collectibles set up, now I'm going to show you how to set up a simple UI and action listener. So I added other types of collectibles as well from my previous projects. I'm just going to quickly set it up. So we have these collectibles set up. They are all animated. As you can see, all of them are animated. Um, go back to collectible script, call it abstract class. Create a public abstract void, let's just call it onCollect. We're just going to call this event right here. So what we're doing now is creating an abstract class for the collectible which will be applied for each and every single collectible. Basically we will not 
need to type in this destroy and collision check function for each collectible. We will be able to call it inside here and inside different script we will be able to specify what kind of events should be triggered. So we have a collectible script. I'm going to remove this script from this golden shroom collectible and then we're going to create three scripts golden shroom collectible emerald mushroom you're going to fire up all three scripts and we're going to change this instead of mono behavior to collectible now don't be scared by this error because the script is basically requiring to get this on collect event all we have to do is just create public override void on collect we're going to do the same thing across these scripts and the errors will disappear and in here we're going to call specific things and it's going to be just trigger action. So before we get into the action behaviors, create an empty game object and we're going to call it game manager. Back in the scripts, create a new folder, call it collectibles, move these here so we can have a cleaner place and we're going to create another script game manager. Now of course if you're going to name it like that, the script will gain interesting icon. Don't worry about it, it's still a script, it's just something that Unity does. Attach this script to the game manager, fire up this script here, we're just going to create simple variable score set on awake set score to zero and at the same time we're going to create a public text score text if this line will error for you make sure just to add unity ui at the top and below the text we can create a string score format speech marks curly brackets zero which is means first number and we're going to set five zero 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 which is the beginning number and that's it then we're just going to say score text Text dot text equals string dot format format and score just like that then down below here create private or public voids let's just call it golden mushroom collected and then give a thousand score simple mushroom of 25 emerald we're going to give it uh, 1 to 5 just to showcase for now because now we're going to set up the action listeners create a new script call it action listener I usually prefer to call it actions listener down here we're using system we're going to call it public static class action listener and we have to delete this as well and down here all we have to do is just call public static action and we can say on golden mushroom collected instead of adding brackets add semicolon then we're going to copy the same thing again on mushroom collected simple as that now back in the collectible scripts we're going to trigger these actions right here basically this script will act as a link triggering actions is very easy type in action Action listener dot and specific event in this case emerald so we're going to set on emerald collected like this and that's it golden mushroom so on the golden mushroom collected and simple on the mushroom collected and for the collectibles that's pretty much it now we need to make sure that action listeners are actually linked back to the game manager go back to the game manager here above all events we have to call on enable and on disable call it action listeners on emerald collected plus equals and link this event like this link in all the events like that and we're going to do the same thing here except just unsubscribe and once we'll have this done of course we will have to update all the scores after collecting so it's best to keep it inside these events instead of update we don't really need to call it every single frame except only when the score has been increased or decreased and that's pretty much it with the scripting so back in unity we're going to create a uv and we're going to add a simple legacy text get canvas and i'm just going to apply this canvas onto the camera use the camera and we will have the canvas around the camera then we're going to set the scale with set the screen resolution actual size set the preferred pixels unit keep it on width back on the text increase the size of the text do 100 zero out everything at the width keep it on thousand and just keep it on 500 this anchor point right at the top by holding alt lock this point to the top corner uh, type in zeros even though we don't really need to do that but just to have a reference it's good set it on white and we're going to just attach this text to the game manager to the score here attach collectible scripts to the collectibles and let's test if everything is done correctly so if I'll move the player 
I should get 10 score from this normal mushroom, or 25, I already forgot what I put in, then 125 from this emerald, which is correct, and 1000 from this golden mushroom. Great, so everything is working fine. Now if you wish you can prefab these collectibles like this. Now of course there is no great collectible if we don't really have sounds. So we are going to add sounds as well. So I have three basic sounds and I'm going to show you how to add these sounds to these collectibles. Now the issue when it comes to collectibles, if you're going to add sound directly into the collectible itself, the sound will not play because the collectible will get destroyed and the sound source will not be able to perform the sound. So we are going to attach all the sounds to the manager. So we're going to attach audio source, set the volume to 0.5 because most likely sounds will basically sound very loud. Set off the play on awake and we're going to leave the sound clip empty. Back in the manager script, reference the sound, serialize field, audio source and we're going to call it it's SFX player, basically sound effect player. Create public uh, audio clips, golden mushroom collectible sound, mushroom collectible sound, emerald sound, and that's it. Back in these scripts, we're going to call the sounds. SFX player play one shot, so golden mushroom sound will go here, and then after comma, we can say what kind of a volume do we want. So we're just going to set everything on half. Copy the same line across mushroom sound effect, emerald sound effect like this. And that's what we need, just basically a sound line. So back in Unity again, drag this player to here. Now of course to add the sounds we have to lock in the inspector and I'm just going to attach random sounds. Of course usually games have the same sound attached to every collectible but I'm just going to demonstrate how effective the action listeners are. So now if everything is set correctly the sounds should play. There you go. Very cool. Everything is working fine. And that's pretty much it. This is probably one of the best ways you could set up all these basic platformer game style collectibles. It is very simple. All you have to know is how to set up action listeners, how to set up abstract classes, and that's it. And you will have a very, very flexible collectible system and very, very clean scripts. Because as you can see here, I haven't referenced a single thing. So thank you for watching. Make sure to check out more content of mine, uh, drop a comment, and I'll see you next time.